He is known as the most feared man behind bars, a man, some would rather say is monster, who is so uncontrollable and violent that even the toughest inmates and most experienced guards shy away from him. The crimes that this inmate has in his books are so shocking that they left the world speechless. His name has become something of a sad synonym for fear and contempt for the law. But who really is this man? What caused him to stray down such a crooked path and then never leave it again? In today's video, we're going to join you in uncovering the story of British criminal Charles Bronson and how he became one of the most notorious inmates of all time. So stick around until the end to learn about some of his most chilling crimes. But before we start, make sure you have already given us a like and a subscription. And be sure to let us know if you subscribed in the comments and tell us which terrifying prison inmate you've just now learned about. The Most Dangerous Prisoner My name is Charles Bronson. My whole life I've wanted to be famous. Taking a look at the shot of Bronson staring into the camera with his freezing, piercing eyes can be terrifying. One thing is certain, Charles should fulfill his lifelong dream of international fame, albeit in the most disgusting and terrifying way imaginable. But who is the man who is all too often described in the press as the most dangerous prisoner in all of Britain? What stray ramifications of life can cause a person to completely jettison their norms and values in exchange for a routine of crime and unbridled violence? Innocent Childhood Even if it couldn't be more banal, it's hard to believe from today's perspective. Charles Bronson was once a dear, innocent child, born on December the 6th, 1952, in the English town of Luton. Bronson was then still called Charles Arthur Salvador. As one of three sons, Charles came from a family that we can confidently describe as middle-class, law-abiding, and stuffy. While his father ran a conservative club, his uncle and aunts were allowed to adorn themselves with the title of Mayor Couple of Luton. Eileen Perry later said of her nephew, As a child he was so sweet, so innocent, and always so nice to others. He was not a tyrant, but rather the protector of the weak. A charming criminal. However, it was already apparent in his teenage years that Charles would not remain true to this path for life. It was when he moved with his family to the industrial town of Ellesmere Port that he first ran into trouble with the law. However, even then, the youngster had a great passion for weight training. Returning to Luton soon after, the self-proclaimed fitness fanatic's toned physique landed him a job as a muscle man in the circus. In general, Charles always attached great importance to his appearance. He dressed exclusively in tailor-made suits, was always clean-shaven, and meticulously made sure that his hair was perfectly cut. In 1969, Charles's first wife, Irene, could not resist the advances of the charming young man with the engaging Cockney accent. Around the same time, however, he also began hiring himself out as a bare-knuckle boxer and facilitating some businesses for their daily income. Terrifying Gaffes such was the case in 1974, when he carried out an armed robbery at a post office and stole a whopping 26 pounds. However, the original seven-year sentence to which Charles was subsequently sentenced was to be extended several times, because instead of thinking about his life in prison and directing it in more honest ways, he preferred to blackmail his fellow inmates beating them almost to death and depriving them of their freedom. He didn't stop at prison staff either. Ultimately, the numerous kidnappings and attacks meant that he spent most of his prison time in solitary confinement. The uncontrollable behavior even caused Charles to see the inside of more than 120 different prisons, including those to which only the most dangerous criminally insane are sent. But all these desperate measures by the officials would always go up in smoke. In 1983, 
Charles took several hostages and stayed on the roof of the Broadmoor prison for almost two days. Property damage resulting from all the chaos was around 750,000 pounds. Despite the countless brutal escapades, Charles was to be released on October 30th, 1988. He managed to spend 69 days as a free man before he was arrested again for a robbery. Brutal Kidnappings 1989 was also the year that Charles Salvador changed his name to Charles Bronson. During his brief stint at Liberty, he entered the ring in numerous bare-knuckle matches under that name, complemented by countless street brawls. In 1992, he was allowed to breathe unfiltered air again for 53 days. In 1994, it was nine days. Later in Woodhill Prison, he arrested a prison guard and demanded a most unusual ransom a helicopter, a cup of tea, and an inflatable rubber doll. Another hostage taking followed two months later, this time in Hull Jail. Charles beat the jailer so badly that he was unable to work for five weeks. The three fellow inmates whom Charles took control of in 1996 had to experience firsthand how confused the character of the notorious prisoner really is. He insisted that his hostages address him as Hare General. During negotiations with the guards, he threatened to eat one of the kidnappers. Charles then wanted to be hit very hard on the head by a hostage, an Iraqi kidnapper. When he didn't want to comply with his crazy kidnapper's wishes, he slashed his own shoulder with a razor blade. Charles later stated about this incident, I wanted to see blood flow. I'm the number one hostage taker. At the court hearing that followed, Charles compared himself to Adolf Hitler, but ruefully protested that he was now on the path to peace. By 1999 at the latest, however, this resolution was a thing of the past. He took prison guard and art teacher, Phil Danielson, hostage for 44 hours. For Danielson, this experience marked an absolute trauma from which he would never recover. Unable to ever go back to his old job, he took early retirement at just 46. In the face of another hostage situation and the long overdue sentence to life imprisonment, it seems all the more unbelievable at this point in time there were still people who did not see Charles as a criminal lunatic, but as a man with whom one would like to spend the rest of his life. Where Love Falls Charles's first wife, Irene, had divorced her outlaw husband back in the 70s. However, in 2001, a certain Fatima Syra Raymond became aware of the criminal after seeing his picture in the newspaper. She then began writing letters to Charles and soon after personally visited him in prison. What followed were 10 meetings and a wedding. But after this became known, Fatima immediately lost her job in a woman's home in order to be able to marry his Muslim girlfriend. The kidnapper, who had taken dozens of hostages, also converted to Islam, and then only wanted to be called Charles Ali Ahmed, four years and a divorce later. However, his interest in religion began to wane. In retrospect, Fatima only referred to her ex as a racist thug. Unusual Visit after the devastating terrorist attacks of September the 9th, 2001, Charles, who was still a Muslim at the time, was visited by two extremists who promised him a prison break if he could win over his fellow believers in prison. One followed in 2007, who would have thought given the history? Another hostage taking of two officers. Meanwhile, Charles's glasses broke. He was later to be awarded 200 pounds in damages. A parole hearing was held in 2009, but the committee unanimously rejected the request because Charles hadn't improved a bit during his incarceration. Two years later, the long-term inmate discovered his artistic streak and demanded that the prison provide him with the painting materials. However, after this request was rejected, a violent fight broke out. It took nine guards in total to bring the now 58-year-old under control. In the summer of 2014, Charles Bronson died. Well, at least that's what came out of a statement in which the criminal stated that he wanted to live under his birth name, Charles Arthur Salvador again, from now on. After all, shortly thereafter, he was even supposed to take part in an anti-aggression course. Tragic Waste If you want to know how to get placed in a confined space and without any sports equipment, you can read Charles's book, Solitary Fitness. 
According to his own statements, he is able to do more than 90 push-ups in half a minute. In addition, he kills prison time by writing his own poems and making paintings. In turn, he donates the works of art to auctions, and the proceeds go to charitable causes. The inmate's wasted potential also becomes clear when we consider that he certainly has great talent. He received 11 Questler Trust Awards for his poetry and his art. If Charles hadn't sunk into a swamp of crime and violence at a young age, he could have become a successful artist who spends his money on creative and, above all, peaceful things. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba Outside of generally scary prisoners, there are also some seriously scary prisons that house the worst of the worst people in the world. This prison is owned by the United States and is located on the eastern tip of Cuba. Following the September 11th attacks that took place in the U.S., the government felt that it needed a safe place to imprison the members of the violent group that caused these disastrous attacks. Guantanamo Bay was first opened in 2002. The general public had mixed opinions of the prison, with President Obama promising to close the prison when he was elected into the presidential office. Regardless of his promises, the prison remains open to this day. It currently houses about 150 inmates in two camps, Camp Delta and Camp Iguana, though there was another camp that was only open for a short time, known as Camp X-Ray. In this camp, prisoners would be subjected to various forms of enhanced interrogation techniques, which is an interesting way of saying torture. Inmates would be waterboarded or forced into sensory deprivation chambers for extended periods. If you've never heard of a sensory deprivation chamber, it's a room that is designed to shut down all of your senses. It is completely dark, soundproof, and offers no airflow or anything other than darkness and silence. The idea behind these rooms is to cause prisoners to lose their sanity and cave under pressure. This is a terrible way of treating humans, though the government insists that it was done for the greater good of keeping American citizens safe. That notion is highly debated. San Quentin State Prison, USA This prison has remained one of the most violent prisons in U.S. history. Used only for the worst inmates in the country, San Quentin was first opened in 1852. The prison has seen many changes over the years, with it now being a male-only facility. There have been several high-profile criminals sentenced to San Quentin, including Charles Manson, Scott Peterson, and Saran Saran, the man who infamously claimed the life of Robert Kennedy. Even though the death penalty is banned in most U.S. states, San Quentin is home to the only gas chamber in the state of California. Prisoners who are sent to this prison are often shown the worst side of America, as the prison is filled with violence and was once loaded with inequality. A great example of this took place in the 1930s. At this time, the prison had quite a reputation for being unfair to an inmate who wasn't white. Because of this, riots would often break out based solely on the race of other inmates. Worse yet, the guards would provoke the inmates to fight one another and would watch as the inmates had their way with their enemies. This has all supposedly been fixed since then, but San Quentin has had a difficult time outliving the memories of its past. Terre Haute, USA If you thought the previous two prisons were rough, this one takes things a step further. Terre Haute was first opened in 1940 and was created to be the new home of inmates of all backgrounds. There was a maximum security unit, a medium security unit, and a low security unit. The prison would contain everyone from shoplifters to serial criminals. It has since been nicknamed Guantanamo North because of its strict rules and regulations. Prisoners are watched closely 24-7, and many of them are kept in small cages by themselves. They are not allowed to interact with other inmates and are only released from their cages three times per week to use the exercise area. This is one of the most strict and highly guarded prisons in America, which is mostly being used for death row inmates who are awaiting federal execution. This is not a place you want to be. La Sabaneta Prison, Maracaibo, Venezuela this prison can be found in Venezuela and has been criticized by people around the world for decades. 
The prison was only built to house about 700 inmates. However, mass incarceration in Venezuela has led the prison to contain at least 3,700 prisoners at a time. Because of this, there are not enough living areas for inmates. This has caused cells to become overfilled, with many inmates having to sleep in hammocks in the hallways of the building. The prison is also incredibly unfair to inmates, typically giving preferential treatment to inmates who have money or high political status on the outside. These inmates are allowed to sleep in private cells, while many others are forced to eat, sleep, and live within inches of other prisoners at all hours of the day. There is also no daily routine, meaning the prisoners have nothing to look forward to and nothing to look back on. They simply exist day after day, crushing their spirits and raising their aggression towards others. There have been hundreds of stories of super violent crimes that have taken place within the walls of this facility, with most people claiming that the living conditions are inhumane. What do you think of Charles Bronson's career, as well as the other terrifying prisons on this list? How can a person get so far down the wrong track? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Please leave us a like and subscribe so that we can soon find out more about the most feared prisoners of all time. And with that, thanks for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.